Ladies and gentlemen, you've been to, listening to a lot of literature until now. Let me tell you a story that came up in South Africa in the last week. There was a, a guy who had a lion, like Tarzan, and he put his head in his hand, in the mouth, and the lion was absolutely tame. Until one moment that that lion's instinct came back and the handler was killed last week. So, the nature of the beast never changes, nor do we as humans. Because if we look at this one tooth, one time, and if I could have the correct uh, advancer, maybe it's the other one. This one most probably. No? Is it this one? Ah, it's the third one. Okay. That's it. Okay, so our needs as humans do not change. We, and I'm not talking about they, because they are patients. I'm also a patient at times. I want less chair time, and if I'm the dentist, I want to spend my time as efficiently as possible. That is our needs, and that is the why of my talk. So why do we look at immediate restoration of molars? There's enough papers published in the literature to have a literature review study on random controlled trials about it. And the result of this New Zealand group was that there was 188 implants with encouraging results. So am I the first one to do this? No. No, Ed, I'm not. It's already been researched. And let's go and look further at the Dion of the ITI. We go and look at Lang. And Lang already, in 2004, looked at this problem with 67 patients and in normal Stroman taper, uh, parallel walled implants, in one week's time it was retalked to 35 newtons and one week later, at two weeks, when we know bone morphology is at its lowest, the crown was seated. I hesitate to think of that. And then when it is asked, is this new? No, definitely not. And you know what they found? There was no difference between two weeks and six weeks placement of the final restoration. And these were porcelain fused to metal crowns at that study. So another study from um, uh, uh, Lambert, One Tooth, One Time, was published in 2017. And then our own technique was also described this year. So that is the why. But, and now is the question, how? And here is one of the reasons how. We are on a journey somewhere. And this is one of the reasons how. And then Stroman BLX was brought to us. It gives us the stability because of the way it was functioning, because of the design of the threads climbing into the bone. We've got versatility. We can use it in small diameter uh, implants, the 3.5s, to, I only go as far as the 5.5, but the versatility is there. The options are yours. We've got the confidence. Why? Because of the literature. The literature tells us is the SL active gives us a superior osseointegration. We have confidence in the rock solid material. And now, with the digital flow, we can make it shorter and more predictable. Thus, I and we as patients can benefit 
from this uh, journey. So let's go and look at the study that was done. It's not a study, it's, an, it's actually clinical case collection. So from the digital planning on co-diagnostics, a surgical procedure was done, digital flow and milling, and then a crown was seated. So the aim of, my, of this case collections was to do a clinical case collection and the question was asked, is it predictable to use BLX with a definitive restoration in the molar region in five hours? Can primary stability be achieved in most cases? And does digital flow allow for the crown to be placed within five hours? Not a full day, five hours. So, the patients that we collected was all from my private office. It's the real life. It was consecutive patients, and it was a prospective study. I did not have the, uh, the know-how or the happy ending of an uh, academic situation where the, it could be a very sterile situation. These were following patients, eight following patients, and they were all determined for surgery within the next three months. We did it in two days. They were all had a single missing mandibular first molar, so it was a healed sites. Opposing and adjacent natural teeth, and the, it was balanced occlusion with no posterior interferences, and the teeth on the opposing side uh, counteracted an unbalanced uh, occlusion. I did eight following cases, five females, three males, aged between 31 and 62, with an average of 51. I used 4.5 and 5.5 millimeter implants, all 10 millimeters in length. And that is what they all looked like, from class one to class four bone. Primary stability was achieved when it was above 35 Newton centimeters with a, and a higher value than ISQ. In soft bone, it was underprepared, so surgical, biological feedback was needed. In soft bone, and that was in most of my cases, the 2.2 millimeter you needed to gently take it in because you get your biological feedback from that drill. Because if you hit the lingual plate, you can feel it. So it's not a rigid way that you go in. It's the way that you touch your wife's um, hair, how you go in, like that. And on that, you determine which subsequent uh, drills need to be done. The cortical bone preparation is extremely important because the cortical margin, if you put that implant in and the bone blanches, you know you are already in trouble. It's not you're going to get into trouble. You are already in trouble. And the medullary bone preparation depends on your biological feedback from your first drill because the study shows that if you go above 55 Newton centimeters in your cortical margin, you are going to have dishing and you're going to have problems with your cases. And as you can see here, in the first case with a class one bone, you can see the preparation all the way to the end. In a medium density bone, you can see the preparation in the cortical bone, you can see the medullary bone underneath, and in very thin bone, only the cortical margin is prepared. All of the rest is compacted and compressed by the BLX implant. So, just to run through a quick case report, all of the drills in sequence, you will always see a little bit of an under-preparation, and there's the implant. That is a 5.5 millimeter being placed with the um, margin of the, cort of the implant just below the cortical margin. And that is the end of it. In the laboratory flow, um, 
a milled uh, prosthesis is made with a vario base that is cemented outside of the mouth, and that is what the final prosthesis looks like that was going to be placed within five hours. And all of these implants was placed in occlusion. But you must remember that in a definitive restoration, you must always place it with a little bit of a lighter occlusal force because a periodontal ligament, the tooth can move in and out, especially in a bruxa, whilst an implant, which is rigid, cannot do that. That's why the marks on the uh, implant is a little bit less than that on the adjacent teeth. And that is what it looks like post-op, six months and nine months. And I was astounded because things don't change. They stay the same. And look at that. That is nine months of follow-up. So now I challenge you. This is all my cases. I do not show one case and talk about the rest of my collection of cases. I show you them all. So all of you pick one implant, and I will show you through it. Six months later, look at that implant, just that implant, and look nine months at that same implant. And now I'll take you back. Take another implant. Don't look at the same one. And we go through it again. That's six months. And that is nine months. And in that, there is no dishing. This is consecutive cases. This is not retrospective study. This is prospective. You show me one case with dishing, and I will give you a prize. But who of you noticed case two? Just quickly. You noticed case two. I also thought that was a problem. Why was it placed so deeply? But let me show you why. Because of the difference in the cortical margin, on the buckle it was lower, and therefore that implant was placed there. And yet the bone around that implant stayed stable for the full nine-month period. Look at that. Placement up to nine months. So I'm showing you all my cases. I'm not selecting one and giving you certain results. So the results. Primary stability with an average of 52. ISQ of 74. Five implants were underprepared, with four of these sites only preparing the cortical margin and using the implant and the medullary bone to get primary stability. The full complement <coughs> uh, of drills was only used in a single case. And in that case, with a class one bone, as I went in, the torque went too high. I reverse torqued it <coughs> and then went in to the final uh, depth. In the prosthetic, complications included problems in the contact and occlusal adjustments. <coughs> no fractures or chips were noted in the nine-month observation period. <coughs> One of the surgical complications that we had, as you can see the lion crossing his eyes, was at the planning stage, the placement, and two weeks later, I was in Europe. My prosthodontist had removed the crown because he felt there was instability. So is that a problem? And was that a problem? Let's go and look what looked, what happened. Because at 12 weeks, when I rechecked the ISQ value, it was at 70. That same crown was placed in the same, uh, on the same implant with the same contact. There was no movement. And that is what it looked like at placement and now at nine months follow-up. Yes, we did have a complication, but it was no problem to sort out the complication. In the prosthetic parts, we had one case where the patient with an early placement case had a 2.5 millimeter vario base. She complained of food impaction, and the prosthodontist at the nine month interval had changed the 2.5 to a 1.5 millimeter um, uh, uh, vario base, and our food impaction problem was solved. 
So thus, in conclusion, the, uh, the one-tooth, one-time technique has shown to be a predictable and reliable treatment option with a Stroman BLX implant. The use of fully digital workflow, also for the surgery, would make it easier for less experienced people to do the same technique. The choice of the appropriate implant system is critical. A tapered implant with engaging thread design and hydrophilic surface facilitates a high bone-to-implant contact and also integration. Clinical experience is beneficial, especially in that first 2.2 millimeter drill when you get your biological feedback. New implant systems and digital workflow requires experience and famil familiarity. If you are an archer and you take out the, your bows, bow and arrows, and you always shoot with uh, wooden arrows, and for this one case, you want to take out your golden arrow and shoot with a metal bow and a metal uh, arrow, you are going to miss your target. So your average implant that you place every day must be BLX to be able to do this uh, study. A learning curve with a new technique and materials must be anticipated. A printed model to evaluate the seating path and context of the definitive prosthesis is beneficial. So ladies and gentlemen, that made me decide after doing that and seeing this amazing results that the ideal for this technique is really in the premolar area. And you will see the digital planning where I use co-diagnostics with a pilot hole technique. Uh, scanning is done and the milling is done, and at the end, the crown is seated. The premolar is the ideal for one tooth, one time technique. And here you can see that case, how it presented preoperatively, and then with the surgical technique, I use a vegetable dye to mark the pre precise position. I do then a roll over flap, and the normal technique of drilling is done. And, but what I find is that additional soft tissue augmentation work must be done at the time of surgery, because you do not have the opportunity to come back and back and back again. So it's best to do all of this. And here you can see I had a dehiscence that I augmented with bone at the same time. And it was a milling, and as the prosthesis was placed, you can see the blanching against the rollover flap that I did. And there's the full occlusal contact of that uh, premolar. And this is four weeks later, and this is actually the brother-in-law of my prosthodontist. And four months later, that is the result. So before and after, and this could be done in five hours. Just think of what this can do to your patients. So one tooth, one time, a premolar, final in five hours. But now we use full digital flow because we're going to do it fully guided. With digital flow and milling, the final crown is done in five hours and it's more predictable, especially for somebody that doesn't do surgery that often. And remember, there's smile in the box. If you do not have the capacity or the fees <coughs> to have your scanner and to buy a scanner, you can all send it to this cloud. Um, and they will do all your digitizing for you and send it back to you. And this is what the case looked like. She came into my office looking like that, full digital surgery, and she walked out with a broad smile. But here you can see, with the fully guided uh, implant being placed, I had to do a little bit more soft tissue uh, work as I cut it out of the palate and transplanted or transpositioned it to the mesial to get a better pupil, as you can see 
in the bottom left-hand side. And my time is just up, and I said I would take only 20 minutes. Thank you very much.